chilly outside this morning. So, got a good fire going here, and look at this fireplace. We just kind of hung out around here and talked and visited last night. But yeah, this place is something else. Well, this is going to be our last day in Normandy and uh, stayed at the Manoir de Jugendville. Did I say that right? All right, my French is getting better. Sebastian, Sebastian over here has been helping me out, except for I will never be able to say Reims. What was Reims? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's never going to happen. But anyway, I uh, came down here and he said he was going to feed us breakfast this morning, but holy smokes, look at the spread. Um, just staying in a 16th century French manor that has ties to World War II is, is one thing. If you haven't watched that episode, it's it's the one right before this one. Um, but man, to, to come down to this, it's it's nice. Very nice. Homemade marmalade, you have um, orange, apricot from the garden. Uh, prune from a, a friend of me have a big uh, fill with a lot of uh, prune tree, uh, apple from the garden, and uh, raspberry and blueberry uh, pick up in the in the, in the different uh, fill. Oh, okay, awesome! Thank you. Okay, well, that was, without a doubt, the coolest place that I have ever stayed in my life. And to boot, I, it really was cheaper than what most average hotels are in the United States. I mean, it wasn't very expensive at all. Um, Sebastian was a great host, had a great breakfast, the rooms were awesome, and you're staying in a place that is just absolutely rich with history. Uh, this is where the WXYZ complex was that Howard Summers and a couple other guys cleared in World War II. So, completely worth it. I'm, I'm so glad that we did this. Today, uh, we're going to be going to uh, a couple of Band of Brothers sites and also to Utah Beach. Then we're going to start working our way back east um, around Normandy, looking at some different things. Going to see what we can learn on our last day here in Normandy. On the night of June 6th, 1944, elements of the 101st and 82nd Airborne jumped behind uh, the beach that is codenamed uh, Utah Beach. Now in the very first episode of History Traveler, I went to Jefferson Barracks National Cemetery in St. Louis and visited the grave of a group of airborne troopers that crashed in their C-47, they were shot down, got hit by flak, uh, and it included the company commander, a guy by the name of Lieutenant Meehan. Well, this morning, I am at the exact spot where that C-47 crashed. So, what was arguably the first casualties uh, of D-Day went down right here in this very spot. One thing that's kind of funny to think though is had this C-47 not been shot down and Meehan, the, the company commander, uh, had he not been killed, Dick Winters 
who ended up commanding uh, Easy Company would have never been put in that position of leadership. So it makes you wonder what, what would have happened. Um, so speaking of Dick Winters, we're getting ready to head east to the spot where on D-Day, uh, Dick Winters and the men of Easy Company took out a very key position uh, that ended up saving a lot of lives on Utah Beach. So we're on the road that leads to Utah Beach and here alongside they have a memorial to Dick Winters. It's pretty cool. Right here on this plaque it says Major Richard D. Winters dedicated on June 6, 2012 by the World War II Foundation along with our French allies from the Utah Beach Museum and with the support of the grateful citizens of the village of St. Marie du Mont in honor of Dick Winters and all of the American junior officers who led the way on D-Day, June 6, 1944. May we never forget their leadership under fire. And then over here on the side, it has a quote from Winters. It says, wars do not make men great, but they do bring out the greatness in good men. And I would say that that definitely applies to Dick Winters. If you ever have a chance, read his book. It's not only a good book on you know, D-Day and, and all the actions of Easy Company during World War II, uh, but it's really a good book on leadership as well. Very cool. So on D-Day, uh, the elements of the 101st Airborne were scattered out all over this area. There were misdrops and there was all kinds of confusion. So as was the case on D-Day with most units, people improvised. They, they grabbed a guy from here, a guy from here, mixed companies, mixed platoons, and uh, went to achieve their objective. Well, at uh, I think around 8.30 in the morning on June 6th, uh, Dick Winters received word that there were some guns that were firing on exit two of Utah Beach, and that uh, was thought to be coming from this place right here. This is Braycourt Manor. Uh, now, you can watch episode two, I think it's episode two, of Band of Brothers or read the story in the book. There, there's all kinds of resources, so I don't want to go too in depth. But the Easy Company assault on Braycourt Manor uh, has become kind of the, the go-to uh, and has been often studied uh, on how a small unit uh, with good leadership can overcome a larger enemy force. But uh, Braycourt Manor has become kind of a legendary place. And this is it, right here. Here at the corner of Braycourt Manor, they have a monument to the 101st Airborne Division, 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment, E Company. And also, as a remembrance for the men who gave their lives on that day, June 6th, 1944. Hmm. May the world never forget. Now, if you look at the casualties on Omaha Beach compared to the casualties at Utah Beach, Omaha was, was way worse. Uh, and part of the reason that, that Utah Beach had less casualties was because of these guys right here. You had paratroopers that were landing behind the lines, disrupting uh, the, the German defenses, and taking out guns like the battery of 105 millimeter guns right here at Braycourt Manor. Uh, 
pretty amazing to be here. Uh, this, this is a place that I've wanted to visit for a long time. But as for now, uh, we're going to head down the road and we are going to visit Utah Beach.